we are suggesting, which is built into a larger context, that clients welcome it and view them as more valuable and as genuinely caring about them and trying to do the right thing for them. Ask the question, have you been a victim of abuse or fraud? And remember, having previously been victimized, the most powerful predictor that you may be victimized again in, in the future. Um, recognize situations that are highly likely to give rise to vulnerability and should cause you, if you know that one of these things applies to your client, it should cause you to say, I need to be a little bit more attentive and aware of what's going on. Death of a spouse, huge. Um, forced change of residence. So someone who just either couldn't afford to stay in their own home, which they really wanted to, or who just got too frail or ill to be able to safely look after themselves. But it often means they've been uprooted, you know, both those things, uprooted, depressed, uh, lonely, afraid, and then cognitive decline is the other one. Which, you know, sometimes it comes on with fireworks and horns, and more often it's a kind of slow slippage as, as people age and move from a point where they're fully able to handle all their own affairs to a point where they're fully unable. Watch for especially unprecedented transfers or withdrawals or an inexplicable <coughs> increase in the burn rate. And what you're doing there is ask about it in a nice way. You know, I'm, I'm a little worried that the financial plan we put together for you may not be working because you're spending more money than you have in the past. What's going on? Do we need to rethink the plan? Not in an accusatory way, just I'm here to help you. Um, how are we going to, here's a problem, let's deal with it. Probe. So, you know, you get the question, you get the response, it doesn't make any sense, and come back with, so, let me see, you're telling me that. Um, document what you're told, and if the conversation, and often this will happen, if something's wrong, the more you talk, the more confused you become. So, usually when things are going right, you start out with a concern, and the more you talk to someone, the less concerned you feel. And you may even end up at a point where you're a bit ashamed and thinking, oh, I'm a bit of an idiot. Like, you know, I, I, I was just being overly sensitive and, and overreactive. There's no problem here. If it's going the other way, the more you talk, the more confused you feel, the less certain you are about what's going on, that's a reasonable indication that something is wrong in the relationship that requires further investigation and action, and probably investigation and action of a kind that you can't properly take yourself. Come back to the trusted contact person and the continuing power of attorney for, for property. So uh, let's go through this one and then uh, I'll open the floor for questions. Um, this is my suggestion. Avoid, just avoid ancestry websites. Um, right there, what, what's just out there and, it, and it's reported that they're being used by bad guys um, who now have a map of the entire family and who grandma is and who her grandchildren are, um, think hard uh, before making that information uh, available, generally available. Avoid screen names that disclose family status. So I, I put, this, this is my invention, I started to do it because I noticed that a lot of my older clients, when they chose um, either email addresses or, or screen names on social media like WhatsApp, we're picking names that disclose their family status. Who's not proud of their grandchildren? Right? Every, people are really proud of their grandchildren. And, and they're proud to have lived to an age where they have grandchildren. And I mean, it's one of the wonderful things about mobile phones is people get to show me pictures of all these wonderful little kids. And I love little kids. This is fantastic. And so, but people pick names that tell the world who they are, and I think it's a bad idea. And I, I, I made those up, but they're kind of consistent with the ones I actually see in practice. So from my own tradition, Booby Barbara, Booby's the Yiddish word for, for grandma, uh, Grandpa Gord, <coughs> Nona Nina. So you know, just talk to people and say, maybe don't give away to, to the world where you stand in the family, and that there are grandchildren out there who might become a conduit into your heart and, and bank account. I'm talking to my clients about password uh, protection software. 
I'm doing with them exactly what I've done with you, talking about the common scams, right? Because that list, like 10 minutes on, on the internet, and anybody here would have come up with a list that was broadly similar to the one that I built into my slides today. So, and, and it helps also because you're then saying implicitly to people, I'm not saying this to you because I'm thinking something adverse or unpleasant about you. I'm saying it because the whole bloody world is falling victim to, to, to these people. And so I'm sharing with you what I've learned and what I'm, and what I'm seeing. Ask whether people have been a victim. Again, I'm repeating it, but it's the single most uh, powerful indicator that they may become victim, fall prey again to fraudsters. And I get my boomer clients to talk to their parents. And one of the things I'm suggesting to them, and again, I want to credit my friend Laura Tamlin Watts for this one, it was her idea, is talk to them, you know, get the boomers to talk to parents and say, Mom, Dad, no one will ever call you to ask for money and tell you not to tell anyone else. And you do it that way because what if you're in uh, Malaga or Miami and your money and your credit card have been stolen and you really do need some help from them? So, so it's the last bit. If anybody called and asked you for money, we're not going to say, don't tell anybody else. We're going to say, do tell someone else and consider establishing a family safe word. And, and not the family name, right? Like not fish. Um, but you know, I give you examples. Just pick something that's memorable and that the person's likely to to be able to, to hold on to. Rutabago, or I don't know why rutabagas, but funny vegetable, isn't it? Um, spark plugs. Uh, and then the, the the last thing, and this is something I actually started to do years ago when I was acting for families who had relatives with major mental illnesses. Uh, and I'm now talking, uh, I'm now using the same idea for, for people who have older relatives who are prone to fraud or who just can't manage, manage money very well, but where you want to maintain uh, their independence by giving them access to their own funds, set up two bank accounts. Uh, one of which is linked to an ATM card and never has more than $500 in it, and, and the other that holds the real savings. And, and the money that's needed to pay for expenses over the course of the next month or, or quarter. So, Nancy, we have some time left? Okay, good. Okay, so I mean, I can go back and talk more about powers of attorney, but I, I'd rather not. Let, let me open the floor for questions. And as always, you know, a question, even if, it, if anything that's related to, to the topic, uh, the worst thing that will happen is I'll tell you I can't answer it. Uh, a friend of mine ended up receiving a call because he was a separated man. And uh, they, they said he owed money for support for a daughter and uh, said they owed a flight truck driver for him. And he his job, spent his home. So, he paid out some twenty thousand dollars. It was a fraud, and even his lawyer bought into it. Okay, could, could, let, let me repeat that one because that, as I say, every time I talk to people, um, the, these guys are voracious and, and industrious, and people tell me about some other scam uh, that someone's come up with. So this gentleman has just said he knows someone who received a call um, saying you owe child support. And if you don't pay up, we're going to pull your license. And this was someone who needed this license to earn a living. Um, and he paid out $20,000. And it turned out to be a, a fraud, which, which shocked even uh, his lawyer, which is part of what makes frauds work. They are really good at it. And there are always elements or enough elements of, of truth or um, plausibility to a request to, to cause someone to think that this is real. And I also take that back to something else. I said, don't get too arrogant about this because in the right circumstances, um, you know, all it takes is, is being uh, a little tired and a, a little inattentive and maybe a little overly emotional. And all of us uh, can, can, can be uh, victimized. More questions?
Yes, sir. Yeah, I don't want to advertise. So, so the, the, I don't want to advertise the product. Um, I actually, uh, what I suggest you do, <clears throat> research it online, and and I actually, I, I have the advantage of working in a place um, that 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 has an IT department, and I, I went to them and and got their recommendation. And and actually, when I looked at it, there, there are about ten of them that that are are recommended, and that you can pretty pretty readily. Uh, find by going to reputable websites like uh, Consumer Reports. I mean, the issue with passwords is, is a lot of the um, services out there actually say in their agreements that if you write the password down physically, uh, you breach your contract with them, which is, which is another reason for using the, um, the ought to be using software that itself may be exposed to hacking to protect you from hacking, uh, but but the Silicon Valley kind of drives us to it unless we want to breach all the contracts we've entered into. Yeah? Um, is there any concern with airport Wi-Fi? Okay, so the question is, is there a concern about airport Wi-Fi? I am not a technical expert. Um, so, but what, what, I, what I came across in my own reading is not so much airport Wi-Fi as people intercepting signals, um, w w which is one of the reasons uh, why your, your own VPN software uh, may, may, be, may be helpful. So that's a really good question. Um, so so the, the, the question is, to what extent have I seen concerns about people in the financial services industry inadvertently uh, having been the source of... Um, the, yeah, so I've, there's a lot of concern about it, and, and, and in two ways. Um, first, in uh, what, what, what I talked about, which is where we actually um, control the movement of funds and we're, we're accepting instructions to transfer so we ourselves uh, may, may be victimized by, by hackers. Uh, and, and second of all, because if we're not careful about properly safeguarding our clients' personal information, then uh, third parties can get a hold of it and abuse it. In the securities world, uh, the regulators are actually laying down standards and expectations uh, for firms and advisors in, in terms of cybersecurity. And even if you're working in an environment where you're not subject to the regulation, um, it, it, it's a good idea to pay attention and uh, learn a little bit about it. And if you can, establish a relate. If you don't have access to IT expertise, um, establish a relationship with someone who can help you deal with these issues. And I think it'll become uh, increasingly a problem over time. I can tell you in law, it is endless. Um, we are barraged with, with people who are trying to get through our defenses every single day. In fact, on the way here, um, I got an email telling me that my account with a bank that I don't bank with uh, had been compromised and all I had to do was click on, on this link and, and that would allow me to fix the, 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 the problem. So. Um, we hold the keys to the gate, which makes us targets, which means we all need to be careful. So the question is, how far should you go in, in compliance? I think it's completely appropriate. Um, and we've talked about this in the, in the past. 
don't play.